Quick disclaimer, if you want to watch beautiful video footage featuring a beautiful record player playing beautiful music, you're wrong. This video is not about that. Instead, it's about a record player that is so much better than it first seems to be. And this, it's not proof, but it certainly is evidence that back in the 1970s, just about any record player was pretty good. So here it is, a record player. I got this for 20 euro at the flea market. We got a smoked plexiglass cover. And, oh, this is strange. There is no prominently placed brand name. Instead, there is the model number, SD5000. Well, as we open the cover, the reason why they did that is because they don't really have a prominent brand name. Instead, they have this. ISP is the company that sold this. They probably didn't build it. Now, there is a label on the back, of course, and that tells you that ISP stands for International Sound Products. That's a little obscure. So, let's take a closer look. There it is. That's the record player. We do have a proper S-shaped tone arm, standard mount for the head shell. There is an adjustable counterweight in the back. Proper tone arm mount right there. Anti-skating adjustment. It's all there. There is the lift. This record player will play at 33 and 45 RPM. There is a selector switch. It's a semi-automatic record player, so you do have a little stop lever. We do have a strobe. There is a strobe light. And along with that comes a fine adjustment for the speed, which is labeled in German. Pay no attention to the cartridge. I already replaced that, and uh, it's not fully done yet. So, let me now remove this little piece of circuit board, because under this lies a spoiler. Look at that. It's direct drive. Well, that's a surprise. If it's direct drive, it can't be that bad. So, let's start tearing this apart to take a closer look, and we'll see what this is all about. I removed the platter to reveal a little surprise. Here is the direct drive motor, and as you can see by the little logo on the label, this was actually made by Machusta, written as Matsushita, maybe you know them by that name. And this is, of course, the company that owns Techniques. So, there is some Techniques great quality in this record player. Now, of course, I don't know if this exact direct drive motor was used in Techniques record players, but I'd say it's quite likely. Certainly not the high-end models, but yeah, that's interesting. The label also tells us when this record player was made. July 1978. It's a late 70s model. The arm return mechanism is made from plastic but that's not really a very important part. Here is the platter itself, and of course, the heavier the platter, the better the record player. That's kind of a general rule. And this is a fairly substantial piece of metal. As you can see, when I turn this around, around the outside, this has a thickness of about one and a half centimeters. And then the center part is thinner, but it still is about half a centimeter, five millimeters. So that's pretty good. This is heavy. I don't have a scale around here, so I can't weigh it, unfortunately. Here is the underside of the ISP record player. The first thing I'd like to point out is that the case is actually made from plywood and these massive blocks of wood. No particle board, so that's good. The chassis is made out of a fairly substantial stamped metal. 
Here is the direct drive motor. The motor mount appears to be made from plastic. This uh, sort of uh, casing right there. We have right here power transformer. Over here, of course, a tone arm. These are the audio outputs. The chassis is grounded right there using this connection, which goes through this piece of uh, metal to down there. There is the power switch right there. Goes over there. Now, there is a fairly long length of wire in between the switch and the spark suppression capacitor right there. I opened up the record player to check on this just to make sure that this is not one of those nasty Rifa brand capacitors that like to explode. But no, it's another Machusta brand item. So that should be fine. Here is the regulated power supply for the motor. Speed selector switch is right there. I have had one of these going bad. It had bad contacts and I needed to clean it, but this one doesn't seem to have any problems. Likewise, the fine adjustment for the speed. This potentiometer also seems to be working perfectly fine. The audio output of the record player is this DIN plug. So if you don't have an amplifier with matching DIN jacks on the phono input, you will need one of these adapter cables. And it's very important that they do have the separate ground wire for the chassis ground. But then there is still a chance that these adapters don't work anyways. I can only get a loud hum out of this one for whatever reason. So I just had to dig out this half broken receiver, which still uses DIN jacks. Can't leave it turned on for too long because it will emit a rather funky smell. But I'll turn it on in a moment so that you can have a quick listen. I now have a record queued up on the record player. And this is really the only thing that I don't like about this. The platter is smaller than the actual record, so it does hang over. So you can't really see the strobe light if you're sort of looking from the top. But then again, if you're in a very bright room, the record does provide some shade so you can actually see the strobe light when you sort of uh, look underneath the record. So, yeah, that's not ideal, but uh, you can close the cover, so it's not totally too small. Here is the cartridge. I just got done installing this. Originally this had a an Audio-Technica cartridge, but that was toast, toasted, quite literally because one of the little connections, little connecting cables had broken off and somebody soldered it back on. So the cartridge was kind of melted and he only produced a dry solder joint. So I tried to redo it. And when I was done, the cartridge was even more melted. So that's now in the trash. This is a Sony XL15A, which I had in my parts bin. I ordered a new needle for this. Uh, it's not it's not an original one. It's made by Chico, which apparently is a pretty good manufacturer. I adjusted the cartridge very carefully using this uh, two-point cartridge alignment protractor. If you know of a better solution, one that's more precise or easier or whatever, uh, please tell me because uh, I'm not happy with this. It does the job, but I just never have the feeling that I get it a hundred percent right. So anyway, let's uh, let's now lower the tone arm and turn on the receiver. Okay, that's enough for copyright reasons and because the receiver might blow up. So, hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.